What, what's up, my dude? <laughs> well, are, are you are you my rye or are you a different rye from a different timeline? <laughs> I don't know. What's happened in your timeline? I don't know. <laughs> That's such a crazy concept with this show. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, this is Burn and Rye, as you know. Uh, this is the Bodacious Rant. Welcome back. And we're doing another review of Loki, uh, the second episode out of six, I believe. Mm-hmm. And yeah, things are really moving forward really quick. I did oh, not expect this episode to end the way it did. I was like, oh, damn. Absolutely we're just, not. We're just, we're just going right into it. And But honestly, I think I'm, I'm really liking Disney Plus's, like, format for the for the shows so far like the original series like this where it's just you know straight to the point very you know easy to absorb and easy to binge kind of thing you know what i mean yeah i mean i I do like that they're i mean along with a lot of other streaming shows they're not they don't have to conform to the you know the basic network tv like prerequisites where they have to like fit like 13 episodes hour long or like 22 episodes hour long here it seems like they're very much saying all right how many episodes do we need to tell our story and where that's the amount we're going to use yeah i mean some shows do work that way like the fx shows work with the 13 episode like 13 hour long you know buffy the vampire slayer i think is the only show i could ever get through 22 hour long episodes or some god awful number yeah because i was just there were a couple seasons i was like this is go- dragging like how much more do- <laughs> how much more of this <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so uh ladies and gentlemen this is just a this is definitely a spoiler episode so if you haven't seen it please you know check it out it just dropped on wednesday the 16th of this week so yeah it's it, it's a uh, how do you feel about it? Did you like it better than the first one, Burn, in your opinion? Or what, where were you at so far? I mean, this one is uh, definitely the f- end of the first act. So it's very much kicking off what the rest of the story is going to be. Like, the last episode was a lot of setup for, you know, the TVA and then the world we're going to be operating in. And now it's very much like, now this is what the plot's going to be. So, you know, the episode one and two were, I think, a really good back-to-back a uh, pair of episodes, you know, really getting us into this world and launching us off into this story of Loki, which I think is going to be awesome. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I really like the last episode, but this one, just again, it's the way I ramped everything up. I, I got super excited. And mm-hmm. again, I can't, like, I it's, it's crazy that I still have to wait another Wednesday. And honestly, I kind of like it better dropping in the middle of the week than on a Friday. Because either way, you have to wait a week, but... It just feels nicer. It's on hump day, I guess. Like, oh, okay, like, I have a great episode to look forward to, and then the weekend's kind of coming up, I guess. But Yeah, yeah it's, line, kind of, it's kind of interesting. <laughs> in my line of work, I don't have a weekend, so, you know. Oh. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but anyways. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it, it basically just left off right after the first one. Um, I gotta say, I really like the uh, the opening to this, where it's uh, the Renaissance Fair in uh, like 1985 yeah. or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that threw me for a loop. I'm like, oh, we're going back in time, and it's all 1985. Yeah, I'm like, oh, like, wait, nope. no, no, no. This is like a, like you said, a Renaissance Fair. And that one actress who was in uh, in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, she was like the, the theater, like, attendant i guess the the cashier at the movie theater in once upon a time in hollywood she's some random fair goer and yeah she's like, hey guys like you're, you're not, you're not dressed, dressed right. up <laughs> and, just, and when they're completely ignoring her like the hunters and stuff they're just like <laughs> some of us like, need this yeah some of us need this i'm like oh man <laughs> like, oh. if you need the renaissance i mean to each their own i just i don't know if the renaissance fair it's definitely not my jam that's but maybe it's because we haven't done it yet I mean, I like the Renaissance Fair. I never dressed up for it, but if I if I could get my hands on a suit of armor and walk around and sweat all day in that, I think maybe I'd probably be into it a little bit more. I'm not gonna I, lie. I'd be like a uh, Joe uh, Latrulio's Le- character, who I forgot that <laughs> in, uh, in, uh, in role, role models. models. <laughs> Let's just gingerly touch our tips. <laughs> Keep your blade sharp and your wit sharp. <laughs> Good morrow to you, <laughs> Burn. Are you ready to dance with swords? <laughs> 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 I used to do that in football. Like every every time we practice, I would start talking like that, and some oh, guys no. laughed at it. But some guys are also like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" I'm like, I'm like, dude, it's role models. Come on. Just, um, just go. 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 But one thing I did like about this uh, this episode is that it, it, I like the expansion of the cast. You know, with that girl Sasha Lane, who was in um, uh, the god awful remake Hellboy, but she was also in you know Heart. Heart beats loud. I forgot what's who. What's the guy who plays Ron Swanson? What's his name again? It's on the top. Uh, of my Ray from from Parks and Rec. What the hell is his name? 
Oh, I mean, it doesn't matter. It doesn't honestly. matter, but it kind of does. He's Ron Swanson, <laughs> anyways. But she's, I like what I've seen her in so far. She's she's a solid actress. So her she she was hardly anybody in this episode, but I think maybe she'll play into a bigger thing later. Also, kind of in the end, her character's responsible for a lot of crap. But I like that little action scene where they go into the tent and um, and you see Loki's hand, you know, possess her. Essentially, it was like, oh shit, I didn't realize Loki could do that. That's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. And she just fucks up the other uh, timekeepers. I was like, oh man, like that's that sucks. <laughs> well, yeah, that was it was a pretty cool action sequence. Like you said, um, th- it was a power set that we haven't seen, you know, from Loki yet. Which I mean, I want to talk about it later on, but I I think that's a giveaway to to something else. But like, again, I'll address yeah. that like later on in the episode. Yeah, and um, I definitely like the flow of this episode better. Like the whole. The feel of it, I guess, where the last one was just kind of like a very... It's much more comedic than this one. This one felt more like a procedural, like a police procedural show. Just because yeah. Loki is like the criminal that they need to, you know, capture somebody. And Owen Wilson's, you know, the cop that's like, okay, you're going to follow my lead or else you're going back to jail. Or in this instance, you're not... You're going to be erased from existence. So do what I say or die now, essentially. Yeah, um, I, I really like how this episode in particular played into those, to the, into those tropes. You know, the buddy cop... Uh, where, you know, one of the buddies is like a former criminal, you know, it's like, uh, reminded me a lot of, um, Catch Me If You Can, that, uh, Tom Hanks in uh, the oh, DiCaprio movie, that. where, yeah, where he's like, the criminal has to help out because, you know, they've got like this set of knowledge that, that the other guy doesn't possess really. So I thought that was like a, I was like, okay, this is a really cool dynamic. And, you know, just coming off of last episode where their relationship was established, I really liked their they're back and forth with each other. They have really good chemistry. Uh, Owen Wilson and uh, and um, and Loki. Uh, Tom Hiddleston. T- Tom Hiddleston. Yeah, I was Don't like, worry about it. I was like, I was stuck on Tom Hanks. I was like, that's not Tom Hanks. <laughs> it's another I mean, TH they, though. They, he could be like his cousin essentially. They have no. the same like, <laughs> they have the same like forehead structure. Anyways, but um, no, yeah, I just like that this episode really expanded on that. Like them two in particular it was just great. Yeah, and I like how this one's definitely playing on more of the fact that, like, how there's only, like, maybe another Loki variant, but then they kind of show, oh, there's all kinds of variants. We just got to figure out which one it is. Like, Loki, had he stayed a frost giant. Loki, if he was, like, big and strong. <laughs> the Loki, Tour de France like a, winner? <laughs> yeah. Or <laughs> Loki, if he, Or Loki, if he was a Viking. So I thought that was really cool that they're playing on that. And I was thinking, huh, I wonder what this one's going to be like. So... That was uh, the ending's interesting. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but um, when they when and then when they go to investigate the scene of the crime, I really liked uh, Loki trying to. I thought he was legitimately helping him, but at, when he's telling him like, "No, it's a trap outside. Like you got to get me to the to the timekeepers themselves, and I'll, I'll work out. I'll, like I'll figure something out." And Mobius is just sitting there like. Yeah, no, there's no one out there. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> yeah, no, I was right there with you. I, I think that was kind of like the intention, you know, was like being. Uh, it, it's kind of funny because Mo, Mobius is kind of a uh, a surrogate for the audience because mm-hmm. he has a lot of the knowledge that we do of the Marvel universe. So he's coming into this like with just as much knowledge, if not more, obviously, uh, of you know what's going on with Loki in particular. <laughs> so like I like yeah. how we were all on the same page where I was like, oh damn, he he's onto something, and then it's just like, nah, dude, you you <laughs> you trying to bullshit us. <laughs> as soon as he said that, I was like, damn it, you're right. Like he he knows how Loki is, and I figure after. I'm I'm would hope like like a decent amount of people. I thought Loki kind of started changing last episode, but it's like, no, he still has his ways in this one. But yeah, it, which it was I nice. like too because I yeah. I know there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of uh, skepticism of you know did did Loki just get like a whole years and years worth of character progression and just like sitting down and watching this stuff. So I like that. It didn't do that. It didn't play into like oh he watched a video of his life and now he's a changed man all of a sudden. No, it would take a lot more than that to change mm-hmm. somebody. But, yeah, no, exactly. It, it's, it would be really bad writing if it's like, oh, all of a sudden he's a good guy now. It's like, no, he's still he's still Loki, but he's trying to work his angle out. And, you know, we're still figuring that out. But I like his little theory when he, you know, him and Mobius are investigating this. Just that crazy idea, like how this show talks about time and how the variant has just been jumping around it's like oh yeah he's going to apocalypses because think about it why wouldn't you jump to a point where everything's gonna die off anyways so it's not like you're Mm -hmm. affecting everything and i thought holy shit that's a fair point that's really smart 
Yeah, and then when they tested at Pompeii, it's just, yeah. <laughs> it's just, it really didn't matter. He came off like a crazy person just kind of doing whatever, and it still happened. So it's like, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Um, but yeah, like I said, the way the way this episode really moved along was great. And I, I kind of like the little line of uh, Mobius and him going back at it. Like, why are, you, why are you sticking your neck out for me then? It's like, okay, I'm going to give you two reasons. You can believe one or the other. I see a scared little boy that I feel bad for. Or two, I'm trying to tell you whatever I want. And, and so that way you could do what I need you to do. It's like, I think they both work. I can't get a read on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But I, I, do, I do think, like, Mobius, it does, like, have a little bit of a soft spot for him. Like, just based on, like, his interactions with other people and in the scene, you know, coming later on that we'll touch on. But um, I did like that scene where he's talking to, um, uh, what what's her name again? Uh, Gugu and Bathara's character, Ravona Rensler. Ravona Rensler. Where he's talking to her in her office. He's, like, asking her about uh, the... Uh, what what do they call the the time uh, keepers? And like yeah, I and think they're the time keepers, and the TVA is like the workers and stuff. Is, so is I like am the, Paul, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm mixing us up with the terms there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he's like asking her about the time keepers, and like she never gives him a straight answer. So it's like, oh man, it's laying down the, you know the seeds of doubt of you know whether these time keepers even really like exist or just like what exactly their goal is. So I thought I, I did really like that scene of of them two together in her office. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm really liking her her character how she's almost I kind of get like the almost like a big sister vibe to him like she's 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 really concerned for him just because she doesn't want him to screw up but it's also like how can you trust this guy like like I'm where I'm putting my neck out you because of you like kind of thing so mm-hmm. I just and like I their did, dynamic yeah and I did like the little uh, visual storytelling of you know where you see the helmet and the and the prune baton you know on on her like side table like she used to be. Yeah one of those uh one of those hunters. soldiers yeah one of yeah. the hunters essentially so i was like okay that's that's pretty cool we get a little bit more backstory on her without them saying anything yeah and you know just them figuring out the whole like where this variant has been i love when they're like oh well they had that blue candy from the first episode when they went to that cathedral in the the mid fi- yeah, yeah. The mid 15th or 16th century somewhere and it's like it was only available in America for like you know the f- 2047 to 2052 or something like that. So we gotta find out where. And it's just listing every natural disaster. <laughs> like yeah. Tsunami, drought, famine, cyclones, everything. I was like, my God, the future looks so bleak. But it was kind of funny just because it's mm-hmm. like there's so much that went on. Not you think, oh, in that few years, how many, how much could have gone wrong? It's like no, there's a lot of apocalypse. It's like there's a list. <laughs> yeah. there's, there's there's pages and pages full. <laughs> And then they go when they go to Alabama in the middle of that tsunami or that rainstorm or something crazy, and it's like they're at like a Walmart ripoff store. That was yeah, really w- cool. Which was like what was it called? Like Rocks Cart or Rocks? Rocks I, I know yeah. I know it was like a, a play on Rocks on, which I was that was like a nice little nod to that you know organization in the Marvel universe. Yeah, so I I just really like the variant. Just we're getting more a glimpse of what this Loki was, what and how they just how they keep possessing people it was, it was really kind of kind of creepy like uh, it had a little horror vibe to it so i was really digging that in the end mm-hmm. and then this and the, the the scene i was referring to earlier when we're talking about uh, uh mobius's character i like how when they're when they go into that that uh that store that a lot of people are using as this like shelter mm-hmm. uh how a lot of the other tva uh hunters or just like kind of like treating people like whatever because they know they're gonna die already. And Mobius has like this little bit of compassion and is like, "Hey, look, like we don't like they don't need to be afraid of us, right? Like we already we know what's gonna happen to them, that, but that doesn't mean we can treat them like shit, you know?" Yeah, like don't again, like how other like how again it's like a cop show where it's like one like a couple hardened cops are like, "Dude, whatever, like I'm the law, listen to me," kind of thing. He's like, "Dude." There are people, we're people too. Just, just keep it down. Like, just relax. Keep them calm. We'll be calm, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, how about that big reveal at the end after Loki is trying to talk to his other self, essentially, and the other yeah. self is just teasing him the whole way around, like yeah, changing into different people and possessing them. I thought that was really cool. And the fact that it's it's a lady Loki, I thought, what? That is so crazy. And the. This plan tells she's so vicious, man. I just thought of the line, like, hell hath no fury like a woman's scorn. And I'm like, no wonder this Loki's so vicious. Like, she's, she's, she was not fucking around. And he's like, even his face, like, wait, what? I'm a woman? (laughs) (laughs) 
I thought that was really cool. Um, and how she she uh, laced the whole store with all those reset bombs. And I thought, okay, you're just going to race the, the whole vicinity. And it's like, nope. That was nope. really cool. Yeah, because she had, like, the little gauntlets with them and stuff, and they were set to, like, different locations at different points in time. So she just bombed the multiverse, essentially. Yeah, that was... Again, it was just crazy. I, I really liked uh, Lady Loki's design, too, how, how uh, like, this... The ma- the main timeline's Loki had, like, the big old horns in his helmet. That looked great from Avengers. I liked her <laughs> little, like, horns, because it's almost, like... It kind of adds on to the mischievous a little bit. Like it's it's kind of it's badass, but it's like oh, they're little horns. So what what can you? T- it's very underestimating the character right off the bat, kind of thing. And it's like she's not someone to be underestimated. Like does that make sense? Uh yeah. I, I wrote it more as like playing into her character, where she's very like much on a mission, whereas the Loki we know is you know very just grandiose and yeah. likes to you know stand and like you know be boisterous so you know the big horns uh like i like the joke in uh in thor ragnarok where he's like make a big statue with the horns you know <laughs> so it's like we, we know he likes his image and we like he, he likes to be grand he likes to be big and this loki's very different you know a lot more subdued a lot more like i said you know woman on a mission like she's not here to like you know give speeches or do all these grandiose things she's just here to do her job and like no not her job but her mission whatever it is which is apparently creating a whole multiverse it's just crazy yeah uh, like i said i i just liked her design it was very just like oh man played it like you said played into her character that she's focused she she knows what she's doing like and uh, again she even jabbed at this loki where she's like oh you love to hear yourself talk don't you it's like but this loki doesn't like this is different so <laughs> And then even our Loki got tired of it. Like, oh, man, I know why Thor got so annoyed of me. <laughs> Never giving straight answers. Exactly. And then when we go back to the TVA, you just see that, that straight line, the timeline on that big old screen in the middle of the room. It just starts mm-hmm. splintering off. And it almost kind of reminded me of like a, like a vine or something like that. But it was just like, oh, shit. That's not good. Everybody's freaking out. Even Ravona, uh, how do I say her name? Ravona? R- R- uh, yeah, Ravona Rensler. Yeah, Ravona, she just gets her little baton, her time stick. She's like, oh man, all hands on deck. And they're all rushing to the time portals, just like trying to contain mm-hmm. it all. That was, again, that's what I'm saying. This got me really excited. Like, oh shit, this is, this is going to be really serious. I thought, you know, WandaVision was having some break on the multiverse. It's like, nope. That was that's child's play compared to what's happening. So, yeah, it just, it just goes to show like a lot of the stuff that we were predicting for WandaVision and in terms of you know breaking into the multiverse and stuff that that's all happening here and it's happening in episode two, which is like, which is crazy. I, I didn't think this something like this or something of this level would happen until maybe like episode four, you know, setting up the last act of the season or something. But this just happened right away, so we're in for something crazy. I think. Yeah, I'm hoping they keep, you know, ramping it up or just it has like a nice like it keeps the consistency up, but oh man, and then Loki follows Loki into the their time portal. I was mm-hmm. like, "Oh shit, I wonder what's going to happen." Like, is she going to win him over or are they going to strike a deal to I don't know what could happen. It, it's literally a toss up cuz Loki's backstabbed everybody, so it's like is it a matter of time before he backstabs Mobius and the TVA? I, I don't know it's, it's so unpredictable but that's that's the great thing about this this character mm-hmm. is like sometimes you, you he's kind of consistent like in his mischievousness his mischief but at the same time he has a heart so i don't know we'll, we'll have to see what happens but <laughs> in the in the words of uh, charlie day he's a wild card <laughs> wild card bitches <laughs> <Yeehaw>! <laughs> jumping into the time portal <laughs> Oh, but uh, uh, be- before we before we sign off, I wanted to mention uh, the thing I was referring to earlier. Where there were some people uh, I saw on like the subreddits and online that were posting images of the ending credits and international credits, and the character, uh, you know, the the female Loki, the lady Loki that we're we're dubbing her, was credited as Sylvie in other countries mm. and i think that was a mistake on on marvel's part because they corrected that just recently but sylvie is as we know is not lady loki at all and instead is enchantress in oh. the marvel universe so i mean I, I i i mean i'm not gonna like hang my hat on that because we saw the whole speculation yeah. with uh <laughs> with what happened uh with uh wandavision and uh 
And uh, what was that character's name that everybody was predicting was going to come out? Oh, Reed uh, Richards. Mephisto. Oh, Mephisto. Mephisto. That's right. Yeah, I don't, I, I'm not going to hang my hand on it. And they'd be in the whole Mephisto situation. But I think this might be a... Uh, you know, a little bit of a misdirect. I was thinking it is Lady Loki, but instead it is Enchantress because we did see the whole mind control possession power and we haven't seen Loki do any type of power that way. So maybe it is, it is a subtle hint that it is not, in fact, Lady Loki. But again, we'll, we'll, we're going to find out. Or yeah, soon, I bet. or maybe Enchantress will come into her own in the multiverse just because Enchantress is his daughter, right? No, Lady Lady I, Death was supposed to be his daughter, but she she became his sister. It doesn't matter. It's a lot to lot to process. But <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of different things, but but yeah. But that, that's what I was saw uh, that was you know being thrown around in the interwebs. I thought I'd like to mention it. Well, we're gonna have to see what happens with that. Either way, I think it works. If it is Enchantress or if it's just Either Lady way, Loki, yeah. it works for me. I'm enjoying it. So yeah, like I said, everybody, if you you know. If you stuck around for the spoilers, and you, you, what else did you guys like? What else did you, are you speculating or what popped out at you this episode? Um, let us know. But if not, check this episode out. This show is awesome. I think. Yeah. It, I, I don't want to say really it now. Good start. Yeah, I don't want to say it now, but it could be the best MCU show so far. And and I love Falcon and Winter Soldier. And I loved WandaVision. I'm like, I don't know. They're they're all three. They're right. They're right at the same levels right now, so it's, it's hard. <laughs> Which is good. I mean, it, it, it's it's a it's a wealth of, of riches going on here, and the, the quality has just not been, you know, substandard by any means. Yep. You know, this is very much we're getting movie quality TV shows on Disney Plus, which is awesome. Absolutely. But until next time, dude, I will. Uh, I'll talk to you later, man. See you then, or I'll see you on another time, or in another dimension. You know, everybody across the dimensions, let us know what you thought about the episode. You know, like, subscribe, stay bodacious, keep on ranting. I'm going to leave a message Thanks. for future Ryan, just to let him know, or a different timeline Ryan. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> All right, man, I'll talk to you later, dude. Adios, brother. Deuces.